Hi guys, James at Rampant Lime Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Denmark once again and we're returning to a brewery that featured on the channel once before. So the last beer that I had from this brewery was really quite interesting, a style that you don't come across all that often. And when it comes to this brewery, they are actually a very established brewery, but it was only quite recently that I actually came across any of their beers. But they've done a lot of different things, they still experiment quite a lot, and I think that's a very good sign when it comes to any craft brewery actually. But the beer we're going to have a look at today is a style that I haven't tried from them before. It comes from a series of beers they do that is quite interesting and this was also a recommendation from the guys at Beerhive and Amma in Copenhagen who supply pretty much all of my Danish beers. It's also one of the stronger beers that these guys seem to do and it's a style that I've had very good experiences with when it comes to Danish craft breweries before. So needless to say I'm very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer, hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then we are going to head to a little place called Nordbu on the island of Fanu which is just across the water from Esbjerg on the Jylland Peninsula, the part of Denmark that's attached to Germany and we're going to have a look at my second beer from Fano Brutus. So this beer comes from their Danish Imperial series, which is a series of, you know, big, malty and quite strong beers that they do. But this one is called Canute the Great. It is 11.6% ABV, so a bit of a monster, but this is a Russian Imperial Stout. So uh, yeah, this I think will be very, very interesting. But like I mentioned a minute ago, this beer was bought at Beerhive Amar in Copenhagen. So big shout out to Jessica and Nicolina. And uh, yeah, they've got a great beer shop there. They supply pretty much all the Danish beers that I review for you here on the channel. They always keep things aside for me. They are just, you know, really, really nice people. So make sure you check out the link to their Facebook and Instagram pages, which I'll put in the video description below. And if you find yourself in Copenhagen, take the Metro, go give them a visit and uh, you'll find some really nice beers there. They also own the Tap House Bar in Copenhagen as well that you should check out too. Great selection of beers there and uh, somewhere that I do need to go and visit again, actually. But yeah, let's crack on with this one and see what we have. Definitely nice to return to Fano Brucus after what feels like a little while. So uh, yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Fano Brucus as well, and we will no doubt add more to that list at some point in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing subscribing to the channel. The support you give is massively appreciated and remember you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. Just go up to the search bar, put your hometown, state, county, whatever you like in there. If I've reviewed beers from your local area they will pop up. Otherwise you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries and you'll find this one in the Danish playlist along with many other things that's being added to regularly and you can check out the playlist of beers from other countries as well. But let's go on and check out my brewery notes once again for Fano Brukus. And I will apologise in advance for any bad Danish pronunciations in this video. I speak Swedish, so my Danish pronunciation is not the best. But yeah, anyway, so as I mentioned to you a minute ago, Fano Brukus is based in Norbu on the island of Fano, which is just across the water from Esbjerg in the southern part of the Jylland Peninsula, the part of Denmark that is attached to, uh, to, to, to Germany. And you'll find Fano just off the west coast. Uh, but the brewery itself was founded back in 2006 by Kai Holm, who was a former dairy engineer. But the foundation of the brewery was funded by the issue of 3,500 public shares, and the funds were raised to convert a former electrical power station into a brewery and bar. But the brewery was equipped with a 10 hectolitre Casper Schultz brew kit with some fermentation tanks, and this equipment gave the brewery a capacity of 180,000 litres of beer per year. But the brewery built a very good reputation for the quality of their beers, but they struggled in the early days to turn a profit. They received two capital injections but they still struggled after this and then the company eventually went bust in December of 2008. Having been out of operation for a little while, in mid-2009, the company was then purchased and revived by the Esbjerg-based investment company Eric Bank Lauritsen Holdings, and they leased
leased out the brand uh, brand and facility to the ownership group behind Nurebro Brewkus in Copenhagen. And at this time, the CEO was Frederick Hegard and the brewmaster was Andreas Kiesmeier, who was responsible for the quality control and oversight in the Fano Brewkus facility. But they put Fano local uh, Klaus Winter in charge of the day-to-day runnings of the brewery. And over the following years, the brewery began to build a strong reputation as this management system helped them distribute their beers across the whole country. And they were helped in particular by American Steve Rold, who is the brewmaster and has been at the brewery since 2015. So a little bit later on in 2018, Eric Baglauritsen Holdings took over the management of the company along with local businessman Henrik Sturup. And since then, they've continued to develop new recipes, expand their distribution, and they also introduced a barrel programme during that time at the brewery as well. But it's still Steve Rold who is in charge. And like I mentioned to you earlier, um, these guys are a very experimental brewery. They've done laggers, they've done IPAs, they've done you know different kinds of, uh, of more malty and stronger beers as well. The barrel program seems to be gathering quite a bit of interest as well. So uh, yeah, this is definitely a brewery who are one of the more experimental ones in Denmark and they like to try lots of different things. But as of January 2023, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced about 120 different kinds of beer according to Untapped, and they will no doubt continue to increase that number over the next little while. But that is all I can really tell you about Fano Brew Juice for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that they've done. Or you can actually go and visit them in Nordbu on Fano in, uh, in southern Denmark. That's somewhere that I do need to go, actually. I need to explore Denmark a wee bit more because I've only really been around uh, Shailand, actually. I haven't been to Fun or Juland itself. But uh, yeah, we will see about doing that at some point in the future. I'm sure there's a lot of interesting out and about videos that could be filmed in uh, across Denmark. So we'll keep our eyes open for that. But yeah, let's go on then and have a wee look at the brewery itself. So check out those links in the description below, as I mentioned. So, um, yeah, I'll just have a wee look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. So the beer, of course, is named after King Canute, who was the King of England from 1016, the King of Denmark from 1018, and the King of Norway as well from 1028 until his death in 1035. And they called this the, uh, the North Sea Empire, actually his kingdom. So uh, yeah, quite an interesting character when you read about him and what he did. He came at the back end of the uh, the Viking era, of course. But you can see plain uh, gold bottle cap on the ca on the, the bottle here. It's going to say bottle cap on the can. That would make no sense. You can also see uh, Fano, the Fano Brucus symbol here on the back of the beer too. But it tells you a little bit about the beer uh, on the back of the bottle here as well. It says, our Danish Imperial series is an ever expanding series of Imperial strength beers, each honoring a different individual from Denmark's long Imperial history. You hold in your hand the beer that started it all, Canute the Great, a double mashed Russian Imperial stout with nearly three with a, a nearly three hour boil time. Canute is dark in color and thick in body and uh, with an exceptionally smooth finish. Rich aromas of coffee and dark chocolate blend with flavours of raisins and brown sugar, and it tells you the different types of malts and things in this one. So this one has uh, pale ale, Munich, Cara, uh, Carafa type three, chocolate, Cara ruby, and smoked wheat malt. The hops are Hercules, and uh, yeah, the yeast in this one is WLP001. So yeah, this should be quite an interesting beer actually. When I, I never really thought about Hercules in an Imperial Stout, so um, I probably have many beers with Hercules in it though uh, that have been Imperial Stouts. But still, beer itself very nicely presented. I should point out that this is a half litre bottle, so this is one that I am going to share with a friend of course. But uh, yeah, half litre bottle. This cost me 68 Danish kroner. So that is, oh, that's probably about 100 Swedish kroner, so maybe about 10 euros. So for an 11.6% Danish brewed Russian Imperial Stout, you know, 10 euros really isn't to be sniffed at, actually. That's about £9 sterling, probably about $11 American, and especially when it's a half litre. So yeah, price-wise, uh, I have to say that about Fano as well. Their prices are actually pretty good. The last beer that we reviewed from these guys, which was also in the Imperial series, the, um, the Margaret of Denmark, which was the Scotch Ale, that was about 7% or something like that. It was a little bit cheaper than this, but still, 68 Danish kroners for a beer 
uh, of this volume and, and ABV is pretty damn good. But let's crack it open then and see what we have. Knut the Great and 11.6% Russian Imperial Stout from Fano Brugius in Nordbu, Denmark. Let's get this guy out and see what we have. think that'll do for the moment. So we've poured maybe about two thirds of the bottle into the glass for the moment. And I can tell you just from the little whiff I'm getting of the aroma already, I think this one's gonna be pretty damn old school. So uh, yeah, before the head disappears then, we can see that um, this beer poured with about a one third finger of a frothy, I would say kind of mid, mid tan head there. You can see some nice kind of medium size bubbles. If the camera's going to zoom into it, you can see some nice mid size bubbles there uh, and a few little ones just toward the top of that. That is of course going to fade away rather quickly to be a thin foamy layer on the top and a thicker ring just around the edge of the glass. But uh, yeah, it has poured pretty much as you would expect from a Russian Imperial Stout. So one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass. You can see a few little ones creeping up toward the surface there. There's a few little wisps on the underside, uh, on, in the middle of the head there. But overall, it looks pretty damn nice. Um, so yeah, I do like how it goes, how this one goes together. But remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel agent you do or any adjuncts that you put into the beer as well will affect it too. But when it comes to a big imperial stout like this, the latter two variables are not going to play much of a role. When you have black malt in there, such as, you know, carafa and things like that, it's not going to, you know, aging it in a barrel is not going to do too much to the colour. But with this beer, um, as you can see, it's, it's a lovely kind of dark ebony rosewood. And if you put the light through it, you can see it's got a little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola Pepsi Max um coloured edge to it maybe a bit of a very dark chestnut but yeah not much in the way of visible carbonation with this one you can just kind of see that it's um got a little bit it is actually a little bit clear this one it's certainly not the uh, uh like one of these ones that's completely opaque you know but usually they have a little bit of wheat or oats in them as well i think this one is all barley malt apart from the, the smoked wheat malt that's in there of course so yeah, nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what style it is. I think we should take a wee look at the aroma and see what this one's going to have for us. So let's do it. That does smell really nice actually. Um, first impression of this though is that it is actually very old school. You can smell that this is nice, that this is really proper old school. But I mean, we've had some really uh, we've had some really interesting uh, Imperial Stouts from Denmark over the years. Probably my favourite one would be the Herr Fredriksen from, uh, from Amar Brukus. That's still a classic. The Caribbean Rum Stout from uh, Horn Beer as well was always a classic one. Um, uh, Black Hole from, uh, was that Toll or was that Mikeller? Uh, but yeah, you know, Toll and Mikeller have done some really interesting Imperial Stouts over the years as well. And for me, those are kind of cult classics. But this beer is really nice actually but i will say that in terms of aroma it's actually one of the sweeter russian imperial stouts that i've come across it's got a good little bit of red fruity character to it as well um yeah aroma wise it's pretty nice so um on the um as i say this one's it's quite an oily and just fruity uh, Russian Imperial Stout this one and it's actually quite slick in its malt base too so yeah in terms of the um, yeah in terms of the malt base then we'll break this beer down and describe it um, we'll break this beer down and describe the aroma a little bit more in depth as we always do but the backbone of this beer you can absolutely smell a little bit of a kind of um, you can smell a little bit of a toasty well-fired bread crust in there's a little bit of woodiness actually um so yeah you've got a little bit of woodiness in there in the backbone you've got a little bit of toasty slightly well fired bread crust too there's one or two little nutty elements in there also actually which is quite interesting so yeah woodiness toasty well fired bread crust a little touch of nuttiness 
and then you start to get a few different kind of brown bready uh, notes out of this one. So there's a little bit of sweet rye bread in there and then a wholemeal brown bready character as well. And you can also smell um, within that kind of bready note there, within the sort of brown bready character, you can pick up the sort of smoke uh, out of this one too, smoked wheat malt. It's quite interesting, but the bready notes in this beer are actually quite, um, they're actually quite wet. Like the bread to me just smells really, really wet more than anything else. So yeah, you can get the smokiness in there and it's actually a little bit of a more kind of meaty, smoky character that you get out of this one. So it has a little bit of that sort of uh, milliard um, reaction to it. You know, when you, you get the little brown bits on the edge of a, a piece of meat when you sear it, it's kind of like that. So definitely a wee bit of that going on in this one. You also have the... Um, yeah. So definitely a good little bit of, um, as you say, definitely a good little bit of that kind of wet bready character in there. Above that, there are little elements of chocolate coming out to this one. The beer does have a little bit of a kind of dry chocolatey character to it. You know, you can pick up that sort of cocoa nibby thing. And I would say that that's maybe about 60% cocoa. Further forward on the nose, you do get a more milky chocolate out of this one, like a sort of 30% cocoa chocolate. Um... The beer has a little, it's got a little underlying of like a Christmas pudding, uh, sort of Christmas pudding kind of phenoly type thing going on. So that's, that's definitely quite interesting for me. Um, yeah, yeah, you've definitely got this sort of phenoly type thing going on actually, which I quite like. But, um, yeah. Above that, you do start to get some of the, the brown sugary notes out of the beer. It's got a little bit of a leathery brown sugary character to it. And then you've got, you do have a little bit of toasty caramel and a wee bit of straight up sweet boozy caramel in the middle of the nose too. Of course, the complexity of this beer is from when we actually taste this thing, I'll bet you anything that the most complexity of this beer is in the middle uh, of the palate. But you can smell a little bit of everything with this. It's actually quite a sort of phenolic-y, cakey Russian Imperial Stout. Definitely comes across as very smooth. Um, and quite sweet in its fruity character. But yeah, I think we've covered the malty and sort of yeasty side of this beer in that description. The hoppy side of things, for me, um, you do get a little touch of earthiness out of this one, but it's quite a smooth earthiness. Hercules, of course, is, if I remember rightly, it's about 7% alpha acid. It's a German noble hop, of course. So it has that typical smooth German earthiness to it. But you get a little bit of herbal character and also a wee bit of a floral aromaticity but quite a bright grassiness for me German noble hops are characterized by that bright grassy nature that they have so you definitely get quite a little bit of that in this one and if we shook the beer up on the fruity side of things um, I get quite a little bit of a raisiny sharpness out of this one we shook it up definitely some juicy plums in there like I said this beer has a little bit of that kind of uh, phenol type thing going on with it as well. You've got a little bit of that phenol sort of Christmas pudding-y type vibe to this beer. So raisins, plums, bit of phenol, and then you have, um, and then you also have that little bit of um, kind of, you've got a little bit of a figgy note in there, you've got a little bit of black currant, and you've also got some wee blackberry type qualities coming out of this beer too. So um, yeah, the way this one goes together I think is, is quite interesting, but like I say, really quite a fruity Russian Imperial Stout. The malt base is quite cakey and quite phenolic, but you have got everything else that you expect of it, and you've just got a little bit of hoppy character. I mean, at 11.6% as well, you could actually age this beer a good little bit more and just, um, you know, you could let this beer age a little bit more and, uh, and drop the hops out and let it mature a little bit, but don't know how much difference that would really make to it to be honest with you but yeah quite an unusual aroma on this one so i'm curious to see how much of that translates into the actual flavor of the beer as i always say though take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of these beers before you get stuck into them but i think it is about time we had a taste of this beer to see how we get on so yeah this one is the canute the great um an 11.6 percent russian imperial stout part of the danish imperial series from famabrukus in Norbu, on the Isle of Fanu, in, uh, just off the west coast of Uland.
in Denmark. Let's get stuck into this one and see what it's all about. Slanger, Skoll, cheers. Yeah. I'm going to say straight away, um, this is one of these beers where the aroma varies quite a wee bit from the actual flavour you get out of it. I have to admit, I was a wee bit worried about this beer with the, the fruitiness and the sort of phenolic nature that it was showing in the, the aroma. I thought, has this oxidised a wee bit? Has this bottle been, you know, has the cap come off very slightly and the beer's oxidised a bit? But no, there is just a bit of difference between the actual flavour and the aroma in this one. But I will say straight away, this is like quite an old school, authentic Russian Imperial Stout, this one. It gives you everything you want. You've got the bit of the, ro you've got the roasty toasty backbone in there. You've got the complexity in the malts. You've got the wee bit of hoppiness and you've got the fruity character. So yeah, the way this beer goes together is pretty damn nice. So a thumbs up to uh, Tefano Brew Juice for this one. Yeah, this is good. I will say that this this one's got a really nice aftertaste. But like I say, um, a lot of the stouts you'll find out there these days are like you know these pastry stouts, and uh, just I'm I'm not as great a fan of these these uh, beers as I am of the old school RIS, these the Imperial Coffee Stouts, or even a nice Imperial Milk Stout. But I have to say here, Fano Brewers have done a pretty damn nice job of this. This is. A properly nice old school, uh, just RIS this one. So if you like that, you will enjoy this beer. And it's one of these ones that's actually very smooth and the flavours within it are all actually quite subtle. That's one of the things you have to let this beer kind of develop and sit in the glass a wee bit and just open up. It's one of these beers like that. So just be prepared with this one to let it kind of do its thing. But it is very nicely done. And I will say straight away, while I did enjoy the Scotch Ale and I did like it and enjoyed reviewing a Danish Scotch Ale, this beer in terms of, I, I think this one's better quality than the uh, the Scotch Ale they had. The Scotch Ale potentially could have been taking up the alcohol scale a little bit more and given a longer warp boil and things to, to bring out its full potential. But I think this beer, um, this beer is just a bit more striking when you actually try it than the Scotch Ale was. So yeah. I would say that, uh, given the choice, I would recommend you go for this one over the Scotch Ale. So yeah, but let's break this beer down then, describe the flavour a little bit more in depth and see to see what it gives us. So yeah, middle third of the palate then, you can feel backbone of this beer. You have that lovely, roasty, toasty, well-fired bread crust in this one and it's, it's the carafa that's giving you that in this beer. You can feel the kind of nice, it's not too harsh, it's actually quite smooth in its roasty toasty character. And for me, that's one of the defining characteristics of any carafa malt. If I remember correctly, carafa is a, a trademarked type of malt from the Weyermann company in, um, in Bamberg in Franconia in the north of Bavaria in Germany. Um, so that's a trademarked one, but yeah, it's very distinctive for me for that roasty toasty but very smooth bread crusty character but as you move further forward in that base layer in the middle third of your tongue you will get a little bit of woodiness out of the beer you absolutely get that toward the front of that middle third of your palate then on top of that you have a nice layer of a you can feel there's a sort of quite dense uh, rye bready type layer to the beer so you can feel it's got a little bit of that rye bready sweetness but yeah it's really quite dense and has that little bit of dryness to it which i do like yeah that is quite nice uh, above that you start to get a little bit of a more above that yeah you start to get a little bit of a more kind of wholemeal brown bready character and this is quite interesting because the wholemeal brown bready character as I, I was picking up in the aroma that the bread kind of smelled really wet and the bready character within this beer really does feel wet but you can feel that toward the uh, front Toward the front of that um, 
Well, actually, throughout that whole wholemeal bready layer, there's a little bit of smokiness in there too. So yeah. So yeah, that nice um. Yeah, that nice smokiness that's in there is um. Really, just penetrates the whole of that. Um, that kind of wholemeal brown bready layer and toward the front of that middle third of your palette in that layer you do get a little touch of nuttiness uh, in there as well so that's quite interesting above the wholemeal brown bready layer you can feel um, that the th that's when you get the kind of chocolatey part of the beer so you can feel there's that little bit of toward the back of that middle third of your palette on top of that you have a sort of 70-ish percent cocoa chocolate. You can feel it has that really dark, more cocoa note as you go further back. But as you move further forward, you can feel that it just mellows out as you move further forward on that middle third of your tongue. It maybe becomes about 40 or 50 percent-ish cocoa chocolate through the gradient. But yeah, it is kind of quite like that, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, the um, I would say that the on top of that kind of dry chocolatey layer, you've then got the brown sugars. So the brown sugars come in a sort of slightly bigger circle across the middle third of your palate. You can feel that there's a layer, or you can feel that there's a layer of um, sort of more leathery, uh, brown sugar in there. But then as you go more into the middle of your palate, it becomes a little bit more oily and caramelly. This beer doesn't feel as if it's like double mash or anything like that. It's not quite thick and sticky enough to be double mash, I would say. Nor, it, it tells you that it's had a three hour wort boil. And that's not a particularly long wort boil compared to some other breweries such as Nerd Brewing here in Skåne in southern Sweden. They leave their wort, their wort going overnight and stuff like that. So the, the, the malt that you get in this one, this while it is quite a high strength beer, it still retains that slightly, it doesn't kind of go overboard if that makes sense and it retains that little bit of a thinner character that, that makes it more authentic toward the, the original uh, style if that makes sense. That's how I kind of view this one is that this is, this is like a more kind of proper old school Russian Imperial Stout this one than being, rather than being a more modern take on it actually so uh yeah that that's it's quite interesting from that perspective we've got a wee bit of everything that you would expect from this one but yeah i think that's everything that we need to say about the um i think that's everything we need to say about the the middle third of your palate in this beer the only other thing i could add is that you maybe get a little bit of an almost like tobacco-y type flavor uh, in the middle of your palate that, that builds as you come it sort of comes out a little bit more the further into the aftertaste that you go with this one I've never smoked tobacco in my life I will point that out but the flavour you get the, the sort of little aftertaste flavour you get from this beer um, reminds me of the smell of, to of tobacco which we used to use a lot in the lab for learning toxicology it just it really has a little bit of that uh, the, the flavour of this beer in, in the aftertaste reminds me of that aroma for sure but yeah uh, on top of the, uh, uh, other than that, I think we should move to the back third of the palate then. So the border region between middle and back third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of that bready build up in there. It's quite a toasty, well-fired bread crust that you get there. But the back third of the palate, you can feel really roasty, toasty, well-fired bread crust. Um, it's a bit drier, of course. Remember, more bitter and dry flavours come out further back on the palate. Sweeter flavours come out further forward. Then you have that layer of uh, of rye bread. And the rye bread is a little bit taller, a little bit more airy, but still quite dry. Then you've got the wholemeal bread layer, which is even more lighter and more airy and taller. So yeah, you've got these really nice airy bready characters in the back, um, in the back third of your palate there, which is nice. But yeah, above all of that, you do get a few more yeasty characteristics out of the beer. There's like a very light 
almost kind of farmhousey and woody brown bread there, a little touch of honeycomb and stuff. I always get honeycomb uh, from the yeasty characters of the beer on the back third of your palate. But yeah, you can feel all of this above. You can feel all of this above the um above the uh the back the, the back third of your palate. And it, it's quite nice actually. This beer does develop a little bit of sweetness the further into the aftertaste that you go. So that's worth paying attention to. But yeah, back third of your palate you can feel the flavour is taller and as you come further forward into the middle third of your palate, the flavours just condense down and squash together that wee bit more. So yeah, onto the hoppy side of the beer then. Back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness in there. And the earthiness is surprisingly prominent in this one. But as you move further forward from that, you've got a little touch of herbal character. But it is quite smooth. You know, that's a typical, a typical characteristic of, uh, of noble hops. But as you push further forward, you've got a little bit of floral aromatic brightness in there. And round the front curve of your palate, it's a little bit lighter and more kind of grassy. There's a little touch of zestiness. Of course, like I said, you could age this beer for a little bit longer and no doubt... Those hoppy characteristics from the green component that I'm talking about would, um, pardon me, they would drop out of the beer a little bit more. But uh, it's up to you if you want to do that. You can get this and, and do that if you like, but I think it's still pretty good as it stands. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the fruity side of the beer then to kind of round off the tasting section. So border region between front third and middle third of your palate. Again, you get a little bit of a kind of bready build up in there. It's a kind of brown bread, but it's got a little bit of the kind of carafa roasty toasty well fired sort of thing and the base of that front third of your palate again a little bit of smooth bread crust a little bit of wholemeal brown bread and you've got that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just uh, roll the way out of the beer so yeah i like that with this one too and yeah on the fruity yeah uh, on the fruity side of things with this beer um I think it's it's quite nice actually. The um, it's it's actually got a really nice kind of oily fruity character to this one. So let's just break that down. So yeah, when you take the beer in, you get a nice little bit of a raisiny sharpness in there. Underneath that, there's a little bit of a more kind of oily, plummy character out of the beer. And then um as you move further, it's quite a straightforward shoot. Um, it's quite a straight shooting, fruity character. Yeah, a bit of raisin, nice bit of juicy plum. As you move further forward into the middle of that front third of your palate, it's definitely more figgy. And there's a bit of black current in the base of that uh, front half of the front third of your palate. Above all of that, you've got a little bit more of a kind of. You've got a little bit more of a kind of blackberry. Uh, type note out of this one but the thing that lingers there into the aftertaste you do get a little touch of that kind of cakey phenol uh, type quality to the beer a little touch of that Christmas puddingy sort of thing particularly toward the back of the front third of your palate there so there's a little bit of that going on but as I say um, raisins, plums, fig, black currant and a bit of blackberry that for me summarizes what this beer is uh, is all about so yeah we'd absolutely say that So, um, yeah, I think this was really quite an interesting beer to taste, I have to say. Um, proper old school Russian Imperial Stout, the fruity side of this one's quite nice, but it does mellow out a wee bit the further you go into the aftertaste and you get a few more kind of cakey elements coming out of it too. But to round off uh, and explain the mouthfeel of this one then, mouthfeel wise for me, it's kind of it, it's top end mid bodied, maybe pushing bottom end of full bodied. The carbonation is very smooth in this one. For me, it's not the thickest of imperial stouts. Um, it's actually very very clean and kind of slick in a way, which I do quite like. The malt base is giving you a little bit of everything: a bit of roastiness, a bit of dryness, a little bit of sweetness. You know, you've got all of that going on in there. So. The, the composition of this beer for me is really interesting. In terms of IBUs, I think this has got to be about 60-ish IBUs. You've got a bit of bitterness coming from the malt base itself, you know, the roasty, toasty, well-fired things, but also from the hops, a bit of floral, earthy and herbal kind of character. Then you've also got that nice juicy fruity note coming out of it as well. So, uh, yeah, I do, like how, uh, I do like how all of this goes together, actually. Uh, this beer for me, it's... Uh, 
it, it's a really nice just old school Russian Imperial Stout. It gives you everything you could want from the style, but it's quite clean and drinkable as well. That's uh, that's it, and it, it does take a wee bit of time to show you what it's all about, but the aroma does vary quite a wee bit from the actual flavour that you get. Like I said, I was worried a bit about oxidation with this one, but it certainly didn't let me down. Covers its alcohol very well as well. You would never think this was 11.6%, I have to say. Dangerously drinkable. Um, but yeah, that's Denmark. They love a, a nice, heavy, uh, dark beer, I have to say. So yeah, I think we can round off there with that one. So yeah, this was the Canute the Great part of the Danish Imperial series, an 11.6% Russian Imperial Stout from Fano Brucus in Norbu on the island of Fano, across from Air. Uh, Ebsbjerry, if I remember the name of the town right, in the southern part of Uland, uh, off the west coast in Denmark. Uh, yeah, really nice uh, Russian Imperial style, this one. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Fano Brucus as well. We will see about returning to these guys uh, soon. We'll need to try an IPA and a lager from them now that we've tried two big malty things. But uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on what these guys are doing and see what uh, Jessica and Nicolina are getting at uh, Beer, Hive, uh, Beer Hive Amar in Copenhagen. But yeah, really enjoyed reviewing this one and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my take on it as well. But until the meantime, uh, until the next time, thank you for watching. Check out my social media, check out Fano Bruku's social media. Do check out Amar, uh, Beer Hive Amar as well and I'll see you guys in the next review. Slange it, Scott. Cheers. See you soon.